Several months ago, I made a video about Michael Jordan's time on the Washington Wizards. However, looking back at that video and rewatching it, I understand how poorly that video was made. Therefore, I wanted to remake that video because this time during his NBA career has always fascinated me. So today, let's talk about Michael Jordan, but Washington Wizards edition. In 1998, the Chicago Bulls would wrap up their second three-peat and Michael Jordan would have a 45-point effort against the Utah Jazz and then he would call it quits in the offseason. The 1998 NBA Finals was considered the last dance by everyone and still to this day, some people still consider that his actual last dance. However, he would play again, obviously. In January of 2000, Michael Jordan would accept a job as an executive for the Washington Wizards and would spend about a season and a half in the front office, and it was pretty bad. In the 1999-2000 NBA season, they would win only 29 games and would win a blistering 19 the next season. Despite saying that he was, quote, 99.9% .9 sure that he would never play another minute in an NBA jersey, he would decide that he loved the game too much to leave it behind. Michael Jordan would sign with the Wizards in September of 2001. Michael Jordan said that his return to the NBA was not about the money, and he would prove that by donating his entire wizard salary to 9-11 victims. However, to start off his return, he would have to get into basketball shape so he could still compete. So he trained and worked unbelievably hard so he wasn't rusty or a liability on the court. Jordan's supporting cast in his first season reads as follows. Rip Hamilton. The Wizards also averaged 93 points per game, which was 21st in the league, and I bet you could guess how that didn't really equal winning. In the 2000-2001 NBA season, Michael Jordan would average 23 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists on 46% sure shooting. He would also only play 60 games due to suffering knee complications. In Jordan's first season with the Washington Wizards, they would finish with 37 wins and 45 losses, but to be fair, they were potentially in playoff contention whenever he was healthy. In the first 53 games of the season, they would have a record of 27-26, and 26, hovering a little above the 500 mark. In the first 53 games before the injury, Jordan was averaging 24 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists. Meanwhile, he, when he returned, there was only 7 games remaining in the NBA season, and he would play subpar. But then again, he was a 38-year-old man with knee problems. The Wizards would obviously miss the playoffs. However, I might as well say 19 wins is a lot worse than 37, so that was still a substantial jump nevertheless. It was also during this season that Michael Jordan became the, at the time, oldest player to score 50 points in an NBA game, dropping 51 on the Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan would play one final NBA season still on the Wizards. The Washington Wizards would also trade Michael Jordan's only real help during that 2001-2002 season and rip Hamilton to the Detroit Pistons for Jerry Stackhouse. I could only guess this trade went down because Jerry Stackhouse was a University of North Carolina guy like Jordan was. The Wizards would miss out on the eventual defensive progression of Rip Hamilton in favor of Jerry Stackhouse. Rip Hamilton would eventually be a potential top 10 shooting guard in the entire league and help lead the weirdest championship in NBA history in the 2004 Detroit Pistons. At first though, it really did look like this could be a potential good trade. Jerry Stackhouse would perform overall decent, leading the team in points per game with 21 a night. Although it was on very bad efficiency, and outside of Jerry Stackhouse and Michael Jordan, the only other player averaging above double digit points a night was Larry Hughes. During the 2002-2003 NBA season, Michael Jordan would have averages of 20 points a night on better efficiency at 49% for shooting. He would also play more games than he did the last season, playing 82 this time and starting 60 of them. Michael Jordan would turn 40 on February 17th, 2003, and he would also become the only 40-year-old in NBA history to tally 40 points in an NBA game on the New Jersey Nets in a close victory. Just like last season, the Wizards would finish with 37 wins and would miss the playoffs. It was at about this time Michael Jordan realized he was not the old MJ anymore and would announce his retirement, his final retirement. Michael Jordan would be offered many starting spots in the 2003 NBA All-Star Game, and since it would be his last, he would accept the offer from Vince Carter. During Michael Jordan's actual last ride, he would receive a standing ovation in United Center for a total of four minutes and would score 15 points in his final NBA game. MJ's Washington Wizards story would not necessarily end here. After his final retirement, he would seek his front office position back but would be declined. He would say this would be the moment he regretted returning to the league as a player. He said that he would not have returned as a player if he knew he would not get his front office job back. I would be very interested to know y'all's thoughts about Michael Jordan on the Wizards. Sorry I didn't post last week. I had a pretty busy week and I prioritized quality over quantity and I didn't want to post a video that I myself was not thrilled with. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and maybe a sub. I made a video on a lesser known player named Marshawn Brooks, and it should be on the screen somewhere. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, night, wherever you may be. Goodbye.